to do Lazarus' talk next <clears throat> and let Sister Donchi conclude us with her lesson. And the reason for that is <clears throat> that Sister or Brother, excuse me, Lazarus' talk is pretty heavy. So I don't want to end on that. I want to end on, on Sister Donchi's well, uh, talk. It's, it's perception. <clears throat> to me, it's not heavy. It's it's exciting. Well, it's, it's different. It's, yeah, he portrays what it's like to be a guardian, and he's trying to scare out the people that are really not going to be good guardians. I think is part of it. But he's just trying to let didn't us dissuade know. me. He's trying to let us know that it's quite an important task, and it requires a lot of a person. So. Okay, so here we go. This is Lazarus trying to convince us all to not want to be earth guardians. <laughs> <laughs> she sounds like me <laughs> hello ignorant ones i do not mean to insult you i am merely stating a fact that may not be obvious to you but nevertheless is quite important to understand if you're among those who aspire to becoming earth guardians just a second oh wow that made a huge difference yeah. I had a noisy fan in the background. So. Okay. To grossly understate the reality, this is not an easy stewardship. Even when things may seem to be running smoothly, this is an illusion. Smoothly can best be defined as a night when you were able to get at least six hours sleep, a day in which your physical life was never directly threatened with termination, and a revolution of the earth where all your earth guardian duties were successful and went as planned. Smoothly days do not occur very often. So they are cause for some small celebration. I just wanna close that window so we don't hear tango. Oh, yes. Certainly it is most likely that future guardians will be called from among you who are already in harmony with the celestial light and those that shall, shall soon arrive. I am here to present some of the realities of this calling in hopes I can dissuade some of you from investing any thoughts or energies toward becoming Earth guardians. Now, why would he do that? He does that because all of our time is finite. All of our time is valuable. And if you find after hearing all he has to say that this seems overwhelming to you or isn't in your residence, he just is trying to help us by saying, well, don't waste any of your time or efforts trying to think about or become an earth guardian if you don't have an affinity or resonance for, for what he's going to talk about. Okay. Uh, can I interject? Sure. Something? Well, and also he wants to make sure that somebody else doesn't end up in his position where he's doing the work of 24 people because they all left for one reason or another. <laughs> well, a so, lot of them died. Well, some of right. them died, but a lot of yeah, them left too. And he'll yeah. get into that a little bit as well. If despite my best efforts of warning, you persist in hoping to be called to this stewardship, I will offer some advice of actions and habits you should cultivate now to best prepare you for the stewardship and give you the qualities that will most help you be noticed and chosen by the Elohim. So there's a difference between being called and being chosen. A lot of people are called, few are chosen. So when you're called, that's when some Elohim says that they believe that you have the potential to fulfill this duty, this stewardship, to actually be chosen means that you're actually now set aside and set apart. And this now becomes your stewardship that you need to fulfill. And so there's many called, but actually few chosen. As an earth guardian, your work duties tend to be divided about 75% with events happening off our earth that pose a risk of completely and negatively affecting the trajectory of Alamar evolution on our earth versus 25% with events on the planet just involving the inhabitants posing the same type of risks. An example of, off -world, of an off-world threat would be a plague coming from another planet through a dimensional portal that would wipe out over half the population of Earth. Another would be space travelers from other worlds coming to mine the Earth's water or other resources or eat or enslave the population. Though there are a few space traveling visitors that would do any of those things, there are some and you need to be ever vigilant for them and very prepared with creative defenses to counter them. On-planet problems usually involve demons meddling with alamars of influence, such as politicians, religious leader, leaders, sports icons, and media celebrities. 
taking care of those problems when they are affecting large numbers of people, at least 100, but usually over 10,000, are the responsibility of the Taz. The only time we as Earth Guardians would become involved is if, is if over half the world's population would be severely and negatively impacted if the natural course of events was allowed to come to fruition or when all the population of a large country or even a continent would be affected. An obvious example from the past was doing my part to ensure that Hitler and his Nazis did not succeed in conquering and retaining Europe and Japan did not succeed in conquering the Pacific. My behind the scenes part helped ensure that both the Germans and the Japanese became starved for fuel to run their planes, ships, and tanks. The Germans were not able to capture the Soviet oil fields in the Caucasus at Baku, and their, and their main source of oil from the fields of Plotsy in Romania were severely curtailed by Allied bombing. My small part was to help the Allied commanders know where to bomb. Prior to my secret assistance sent by anonymous courier, they dropped a lot of bombs, but they were all off target. Once the Romanian oil fields and facilities were exactly pinpointed by me, the Germans simply ran out of the fuel to power their war machine. Japan was actually easier as the Americans already clearly understood the need to use their submarines to torpedo Japanese ships, transporting oil from the captured oil fields in Indonesia. Once again, I found anonymous messages alerting the Allied command to when Japanese oil tankers were leaving port was of great assistance in sinking those ships. Something most historians fail to understand is with both Germany and Japan, the whole point of their starting wars was to secure sources of oil so they could grow their empire. Both countries lacked that commodity in their own lands. The only way they could expand their empire was to capture oil fields in other countries. The Russian-Ukraine war is a current event. I am doing what I can to prevent turning into World War III with nuclear weapons. This war brings home one of the greatest reasons you do not want to be a guardian. And that is due to nuclear weapons and even modern non-nuclear weapons. The level of destructive power is many, many times greater than the world has ever had before. And there's less you can do to stop it from being unleashed. The reality is very frustrating and requires a great deal more time than decades past to prevent Armageddon. There are actually less wars and genocides in your lifetime than there have ever been in the world's history other than during the Pax Romana, which lasted for over 200 years and began with the, and began with the reign of Augustus about 27 years before the birth of Yeshua. However, the destructive potential of modern wars is far, far greater than wars of the past and complete annihilation of an entire country can be accomplished almost as simply as one person pushing one button. Whereas in the past, it would require a huge army waging a protracted war. Even then the country would not be obliterated, merely subdued and conquered. That brings me to the next point that many earth guardians find they cannot bear, which in the past has caused multiple couples that were earth guardians to give up their stewardships. That is the fact that you will be witness to much misery, death, and destruction that you can do absolutely nothing about. Normal Alamar idiocy and stupidity, even when it affects innocent people, including children and animals, is part of the physical existence that allows people to learn and grow from their experiences and gain or lose more soul essence. If it primarily affects only a few people, it is part of the law of consequence. If it affects innocent people, it is, as they say in the military, collateral damage. It is harsh to say that, but it is the truth. A perfect example of the law of consequences in action and its effects upon multiple people would be a couple with children getting divorced. If the couple's relationship is so toxic for whatever reason that they cannot get to a place of consistent harmony and love, then it is likely they are frequently screaming at one another, perhaps even physically attacking each other. And because they are frequently very angry with each other, they will often take out their anger with shortness and screaming at the defenseless children. This is a terrible thing for children to have to experience and negatively affects them for all their life unless they learn to release the negative energies. On the other hand, if the couple gets divorced, this too creates enduring trauma that will be acted out in negative ways all of their life unless the children learn to release the trauma. In any case, 
even though you will have several excellent tools and wise advice that could help this couple and family to do so would be at the expense of helping a far larger number of people. Though you may be quasi immortal, you still only have a finite number of awake hours each day. As hard as it will sometimes be, you must ignore the struggles and traumas of small numbers of people so you have enough time in your day to help a far greater number of people. Then we have war and genocide. As these are almost always instigated by demons, they are the responsibility of the Taz. The reality is there are, are far more demons on our earth than Taz by a factor of something like a million to one. Despite that ratio, though you wouldn't think so by looking at the wars and war related atrocities continually going on, the Taz are very effective at preventing these things. For every war or genocide you see occurring, big or small, they probably have stopped at least an equal number that you've never heard of because they prevented them from occurring. Nevertheless, many still do transpire and it grieves your heart to see the suffering and death so many people experience, knowing that you could help the Taz help the people, but needing to restrain yourself from doing so unless it is of such a magnitude that it will negatively and severely affect many millions of people. Dealing with misery, grief, and setbacks, not just with other people's lives, but sometimes with your own as well, leads to the next most important quality of any of you that aspire to be Earth, Earth Guardians, which is you must have the ability to always cultivate and have a positive disposition that is little dimmed when you encounter misery, grief, or setbacks, even in your own life. Those negative energies will always be around you, literally every day. Earth guardians are able to not become negative themselves in their thoughts and words, even when they are surrounded by negative circumstances. Earth guardians are those people that see a half filled glass of water and as being half full, not half empty. A key test of your ability to have an earth guardian mindset is if you can get on with a task without thinking of it in a negative way, even when it is in fact an undesirable or sad task. Consider your household trash. If you needed to take a really stinky garbage can, one that just reeked of bad odor, out to the street to be picked up by the trash collecting company, but the street was 100 meters away, and it was a hot summer's day, what would you be thinking or maybe even saying aloud as you rolled the can of vile garbage out to the street? A normal person would be thinking aloud to themselves, eh, this garbage smells so bad. They might even be voicing those sentiments aloud, maybe even with a swear word or two thrown in or thinking about how smelling the garbage made them want to vomit themselves. On the other hand, an earth guardian might note in passing that the garbage really stank, but they would not dwell upon the stink or allow the stink to cause them negative thoughts or utter negative words. Nothing the garbage, noting, noting the garbage stank was merely an observation of a fact. The earth guardian would then proceed to simply do their job and take out the garbage without any more negative thoughts about it. It was merely a job they had to do, so they did it. That positive mindset and emotional distancing from unpleasant duties or life circumstances is the only way you can cope with them. This is a valuable skill for your everyday life right now and an essential one for successful Earth Guardians. Then we come to the reality that any friends you have or people you love other than your spouse will, will be in your life briefly then gone. When you first become a guardian, you will need to watch from the shadows as all of your children, family members and friends pass away. Some with suffering you could alleviate with the advanced knowledge and tools of healing you're given as an Earth Guardian. But once you are a guardian, it is not given to you to interfere in the law of consequences and the normal paths of a person's life. If the suffering of others, especially family and friends, is more than you can bear, I suggest you become a doctor or counselor in your facade life so you will at least be able to assuage your, your empathy by helping a few people. I have taken this path on more than one occasion. This topic leads into yet another reason you may want to reconsider desiring to become an Earth Guardian which is you have to keep hiding the fact that you do not age. In the modern world of observation cameras on every corner, cell phones with video capability in every pocket, and governments, social media, and corporations data mining your every move or purchase, it has become exponentially more difficult to stay off their surveillance grid. I have had to resort to no longer maintaining a facade identity, as I no longer felt confident keeping my immortal identity hidden. Now I appear in person on earth only when absolutely necessary 
and interact with people as little as possible. When not needed in person, I retreat to the vast lands of the great library, which is accessed through a portal and is not, not in your earth dimension. Sadly, this avenue of disappearance will not be available for future earth guardians. It is only possible for me because I possess the one and only transport key to the portal, which was only given to me by my sister Miriam after I became the sole remaining earth guardian. Even if you appeared at the portal entrance in person, there are only two keys to open it. On the bright side, though the great library cannot be a refuge for you, there are many other peaceful worlds you can access through other portals. If you are chosen as an earth guardian, there will surely be some entrances to desirable worlds somewhere in your geographic area of responsibility. Then of course, there's the issue of dying. Earth guardians are given the ability to continuously regenerate healthy cells, hence we no longer age, but we can still be killed by simple weapons like a dagger or a gun or die from disease or poison. In the case of my dear wife, she chose to die because, excuse me, in the case, in the case of my dear wife, she chose to die while we were living in Istanbul during the Black Plague, mainly because she had become too wearied of continuing as an Earth Guardian after 1300 years. She could have passed without physically getting diseased and dying, but she wanted to experience it so she could have greater empathy for others suffering in the future. Speaking of wives, having to live with your spouse for centuries upon centuries under very challenging circumstances has to also be considered as a drawback to being an Earth Guardian. Think for a moment what it would be like right now if you had to live with your current spouse basically every day and night for the next 50 years, or how about 500 years or more? To be able to not just live with your spouse every day, but also work with them and go into battle together with them may seem romantic, but it actually is a great test of love. This then is my final message to you about becoming an Earth Guardian. If this is something you truly desire after all I have said to dissuade you, then know that you cannot do it alone. Elohim only chooses couples or tries that are in exceptional harmony with one another. Sure, there are other things you can do to increase your likelihood of being chosen, such as becoming proficient in martial arts and very well versed in world politics and history. But an in harmony and in sync relationship is essential. You must have that before you leave this life. The other items I mentioned below are very helpful to ensure you are among the chosen, but not having them would not preclude you from being chosen as an earth guardian. But all of those without the needed level of loving harmonious relationship would be for naught. The most important point is to be in a supremely harmonious relationship that not only loves well together, but works well together. You should know each other so well that you can easily finish each other's sentences, regardless of what the subject is being spoken about. Likewise, you should know each other well enough that when in a position to make a decision when your spouse is not present, you would have no need to consult them because you would already 100% know how they would answer and what course they would desire to take. To those of you who still wish to enhance your likelihood of being chosen for the Earth Guardian Stewardship, please take these six points to heart and become better in each. Number one, a relationship with your spouse that is always harmonious, non-critical unless invited to offer critique, respectful, knows exactly how the other thinks and how they would choose to speak or act in any situation, and shows love every day by word and deed, both big and small. Your devotion to your spouse above all others, including your children, must be absolute. Number two, become proficient in physical combat as well as weapons. This was not a requirement of the first round of Earth Guardians 2000 years ago, but was found with our early experiences to have merit. Though we are given special Celestine tools, that most often preclude the need for physical defense. There are times when physical attack comes upon you so suddenly that the only successful way to defend yourself, or at least be able to give yourself a moment to employ magic or a Celestine tool, is to be able to thwart the attack by physical means. Number three, becoming proficient in the use of magic and your psychic abilities. Number four, becoming well-versed in world news and the politics of major countries, especially any conflicts. Number five, play games often that require the use of your mind, strategy, and memory as all are skills you will need as an Earth Guardian. Number six, you have a positive, even cheerful attitude, even when needing to deal with unpleasant tasks and sad life circumstances. You can do your duties without being affected emotionally 
or mentally by the unpleasantness you must often deal with. If all, and he emphasized all, if all of these six things do not hold at least a strong interest for you in this life, then you should not consider hoping or trying to become an earth guardian. That is all I have time to speak upon the subject. I hope I have made some of you realize becoming an earth guardian is not a desirable path for you. Yes, you get to have some awesome celestine tools like transporting crystals and get to see more strange new worlds than the fictitious characters of Star Trek but there are also many prices you must pay. For those who wish to persist onward, understand that many are called, they have the potential and the desire, but few are chosen. Only those that meet the six criteria above before their time in this life is done. If you are successful, both called and chosen for this stewardship, I am sure I will be your mentor and I look forward to meeting you then. Go forward in the light with faith and brave hearts, Lazarus. Wow. <clears throat> Thank you for sharing that. Thank wow. you. I, I felt like I was in a movie, Jedi <laughs> Knights. <laughs> we're there. <laughs> I think we're all martial artists. <laughs> we're <in> the, <laughs> it's well, it gives us yeah, all a good, a good nice. guide to make an assessment. Is that really something we want to aspire to or not? And are we willing to make the necessary yeah. changes in, in us to to be in the mold of an earth guardian because all of us i don't care who we are are going to have to make some changes in in the way we are and basically lazarus is saying if you do these thing things in this life you're showing elohim that this is a path you want to be on this is a stewardship you want to be and it's nothing that we need to be and we're not that we don't lose any soul essence if we choose not to be on the path of being earth guardians so it's purely it's a personal choice of each of us but the six guidelines are also good even if you're not this is going true. to this is true yeah help interested in being an earth guardian they're just good principles good practices so um how does everybody feel and think after hearing lazarus message i like to know each person's response there <laughs> it's for me yeah, it, it's no it's it, it's it's it was like exciting just to hear, you know, someone, you know, 2000 years old telling you the requirements, right? The yeah. six steps, right? And what you need to do. Um, and what, you, if, if, if that's something that you want to do, something you could work toward, right? It was just exciting because, you know, it's, it's Lazarus, come on, it's Lazarus, right? <laughs> so it's, come on, you know, I read it in the books, right? It's, you know, what else could you ask for from somebody with so much knowledge, right? So much information telling you, you know, at the same time trying to scare you away. It's like, it's like my grandmaster telling me, you want to learn this technique? I said, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, this is what's going to happen. You're going to do a thousand push-ups. You're going to run around the block 15 times. You're not going to eat. You're not going to rest. And, and then, then, and then you're going to, then you're going to go, you know, fight me and then fight this other master. You still want it? And you're like, yeah. <laughs> right? And, 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 I'm, and I'm doing it now. 30 years later, I'm still doing that, right? <laughs> so, 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 yeah. So, so it's almost like the same thing, but this is, this is a much more different level now, right? And it's, it kind of puts things in perspective how you could change yourself, not only for guardianship, but how you could change yourself, you know, right now. He's giving you the keys. He's giving you the lesson, right? Now, if you want to go to become a guardian, yeah, you could do that. But also to get more of your light enhanced, to get that more energy enhanced, this is what you could do, right? And that's, that's powerful. That's, that's learning from a, from a grandmaster, right? That's what else could you ask for? Right. That's my opinion. Oh, thank yeah. you for sharing. That's a great opinion. Yeah. Yeah, I feel the same way. Yeah. Like, wow. Like, think of all the experiences he's had. I mean, we saw, we hear of him way back in the beginning where it's like, oh, no, Lazarus is, <laughs> don't touch that. <laughs> right. And here he yeah. is, you know, 2,000 yeah. years later. Teaching us what to not touch. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anybody yeah. else want to give an I, opinion? I feel amazing. <laughs> 
Uh, well, <laughs> only if someone speaks with an opinion. Uh, I I feel amazing. It was like uh, since ever since the first time I read Inception, I I wanted to be like him because I never found my place on this earth and. And he, he was everything that I want. Uh, even uh, uh, Miriam, uh, when she was my idol, she became more of my idol when she became the angel of covenant. When someone is not of this earth and do stuff that doesn't involve so much this earth, I want to be like them. And I, I am prepared in the martial arts. Um, I have my, I found my soulmate. I, I, I told him uh, since the moment you you spoke two years ago that we could be guardians of planet Earth. I said to Alex, work on that, work on that. We are going to be <laughs> guardians of planet Earth. <laughs> you, must, you must do spells. You must, you must love me. You must be honest. We must work on each other else we won't be picked. Come on, try it up. I want us to be picked. <laughs> and uh -huh. and he's all into politics, which I'm not, and we are just um, complementing each other. I'm good with strategy, and he's good with uh, knowledge of what is now happening. He's all in this politics, in the dark web, listening every theory of conspiracy, listening from all sides. I'm with all the magic things, and... It's, it's like I've been two years now preparing, hoping that I could see all the worlds <laughs> that uh, Lazarus have uh, and, and all the guardians of the planet Earth, especially Lazarus and Hannah. Uh, I, uh, the moment I read about them and their adventures, uh, no matter how unpleasant, it was like I, I'm prepared for that because I can take evil. I know evil. I, I live in this darkness. I, and but yeah, it's amazing to it. yeah. And but it's amazing to do it with your husband. The love compensates everything. This is why I believe we are picked in couples. This is why there is not an guardian angel but we go in pairs because of all the, the the battle at night you can hug your soulmate and it compensates and you two are always together right we we help each other so i i say I go for it, and I'll, mm -hmm. and Alex waits for me to translate him everything that Lazarus said. <laughs> is what so, so, yeah, we I believe we will go that way because I don't have any other purpose. I I teach my students like uh, like the grandmaster of Brother Reggie. I say to my students, "You want to be healed? Okay, then you will vomit. You might be." get a divorce you might get change places you will be kicked out of home do you still want to be healed to go out of that environment that make you healed and only those who said yes i do i want to stay alive no matter what only those get healed so i know the pressure the the work you have to do so for me it's amazing opportunity and i I would be sad if I'm not big, but also <laughs> it's my goal, my aim. Else I have nothing to live for if not becoming a guardian angel. Well, you have you have a lot to live for because so much. just just right now in this life you help so many, including all of us who get to share yeah. of your 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 wisdom and your teaching and your your passion every Sunday. It's wonderful. Right. <laughs> Uh, anyone else want to contribute uh, what they thought about what Lazarus had to say? Okay, Sister Jeanette. It was awesome. It was awesome. Um, I checked off all those marks. I don't know if I've really met my soulmate yet. I've been married for a very long time, over 25 years. But is he my soulmate? Who do you, I mean, how do you, I don't know. I don't know about that one. I check off all the others. 
I see myself more as a traveler. I know I've been through so many things and different experiences. Because I don't I haven't found my space yet. Um so I consider myself a traveler, fairy, butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> um, something that might help you. Uh... But I, I believe in the Celestine way. I do believe in the Celestine way. I do believe in this path. It resonates so strong within me. So maybe I'm one of the weights and measures. <laughs> we'll find out one day. Right. Well, yep. we're so happy that you're here with us, Sister Jeanette. Yep. And uh, something that might help you on determining yeah. the soulmate. Uh, or anyone else who's curious about that too. I have a book uh, that came out some years ago. Um, it's called Soulmate Auras. And uh, it's a great mm -hmm. book to help find your soulmate if you don't know if you have one or to confirm that the person you're with is your soulmate if you, if you want to confirm that. And it's, it's a neat book because it has two ways that you can do that. One, it teaches you how to do it with the aura. But if you're not sensitive enough with auras to be able to make that determination, it tells you how you can do it, even if you can't see or feel auras. So uh, I do recommend that book for anybody who wants to either confirm they have a soulmate or is looking for their soulmate still. Okay, so um, anybody else want to contribute? Brother Estebis or Sister Danny, you want to contribute anything about Lazarus' talk? Because there is more to come. Well, I do. Well, I have a few words, if you like to hear. Well, yes, please. maybe I'm, I'm still look. Well, I still perceive uh, everything around me, the world, the universe, through the eyes of a child, uh, 22 years old, when it's compared to a 2,000 years old man. And um, it's always my aim to, well, even I never heard of uh, being a guardian of the earth before, but uh, since I was shy, I always aim for um, being the guardian of all the children of God, not just the earth, but every single living thing that oh. God created. Gotcha. You know, so I totally get it that. Is, is my, it is my goal to uh, make sure that every single children of Elohim to be happy, guided to the light, and be free from the chains of darkness. <clears throat> Even if I'm not the guardian of the earth, but I am willing to incarnate even thousands of times to the earth only to make sure that all the stream of light will not be left in the darkness. Even a single one, I will get to the earth in the physical uh, form. You're like Kuan just, Yin. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. You just need to find oh, your I'm sorry yeah, I need to I interrupt you. <laughs> I did not mean to interrupt. Well, even if I have to suffer the physical pains of the mortality millions of times, I should choose to incarnate again to only to guide even a little ant still struck in the darkness to the light. That's all. And I'm, I maybe sounds like a child and being too naive uh, to you guys because you uh, more experience and older with years of life, but that's all I wanted. Thank you well, for sharing all. with us. And I think we're all child's children compared to 2000 year old Lazarus. <laughs> <laughs> right. And you, you yes. have such great death, uh, brother Estebus, that you have all the qualities to be an earth guardian and you just need to find your soulmate. <laughs> Relationship is definitely the key. I don't know if you yeah. picked up when Lazarus was talking, um, when he gave the six things, and he said that that if you had the relationship in this life, but you didn't have the other five things yet, 
that that would be still you'd be could be chosen if they were things you were aspiring to. But he said, if you had the other five without the relationship, then you wouldn't be chosen because the afford to be chosen, you have that relationship is such an important thing. So it's something we all have to work on, not just having a relationship, but having the relationship and harmony. and having that in harmony and syncness together, which, you know, Samara and I, we, we still are working on that aspect. I mean, we're not 100% harmonious and in sync with everything. We, we know that that's what we need to be and we work for it, but we don't always get there every day. So um, it is We're something. both very headstrong. <laughs> I, I married my best friend. <laughs> well, that, was special. Now, that makes life you know a pretty harmonious right there. <laughs> to me, that's part of a relationship. It is. It is. It's, it's a different. Oh, my gosh, she is. Well, my best that, friend. that's <laughs> where a lot of people get confused because that is actually the number one criteria for a soulmate is being your best, being friend. best friend and if you were to isolate any one of the oh, okay. centers you would find that your it may not be what you um, envision romantically based upon movies but if you were to isolate your heart connection you would find that that your that heart connection is stronger than you realize and uh, stronger than any other connection that you have with anyone else and so sometimes people have right in their hands what they don't recognize it's like that's very very true what samara said it's you think about your auric energy in all your different energy centers and think about it in a, in a quantity let's say the quantity is 100 you have 100 energy that's divided among all your energy centers so some gets a little and some gets a little bit more but that's divided so now okay. if you uh for instance when someone gets super infatuated like a, a new love and they're just like all they can think about is that person all the time well what energy centers are resonating at that point probably only the heart and the thems maybe <laughs> maybe just one of those but because <laughs> because it's not all the energy centers resonating it's just the couple of them so all that energy is focused onto just two so those one or two become very powerful they very really aware of them on the other hand if you have someone who's your best friend why are they your best friend they're your best friend because they resonate with you on 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 most of your energy centers maybe not all of them because then they would be for sure a soulmate but they they, they definitely resonate on most of your energy centers so now you have the same hundred, mm -hmm. but it's divided by more energy centers. So each one doesn't seem as strong as that intense passion infatuation that might someone might have uh, with someone at, at an, another point. But what happens if you think about your own life, you realize that if you've had those intense passion infatuation moments, that they are very intense for the moment, but they don't last. They burn and, out. And they burn out. And why? Because there's not that kind of strong connection with the other energy centers that is necessary for a long lasting relationship. So, so someone being your best friend often might be your hidden soulmate and you just didn't realize it because you didn't have any <laughs> okay. feelings that you, that you think about or maybe have had in the past with someone. Okay, um, Sister Zandy, did, you, Thank you. <laughs> did you have anything you wanted to add? Yeah, I have something to say. Yeah, I have something to say. Mm, hearing him talk about children and people like watching innocent people so far and go to stuff sometimes and you have to like face the major <laughs> is very touching and just hearing it is supposed to be scary, but I don't see it that scary because it's actually fun traveling places and getting to see so many things and getting to help so many people in this our realm and going to other places. So it's very, very nice of him to like for one of, of what we are going to face in case we choose this path. So it's really amazing to me and the six principles and the six ways he gave is also very amazing because we have to always stay positive and there are so many things that can make us negative, feel negative or think negative, like distress 
and the problems that come with it. But following his steps is really amazing for our life, even without being an earth guardian. Just following that step uh, is going to give us an amazing life. So I think from everything he said, the becoming an earth guardian is very, very important, but it's also something that can teach us to be normal, amazing people, like to help so many people and um, both ourselves. So that's what I have to say. Well, thank you, Sister Zani. That's wonderful. Thank you for sharing yes. and all true yeah. what you said. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now there's actually a part two to what Lazarus had to say. I wanted to talk about his part one first, but there is a part two, and uh, all of you may not want to hear part two. Um, so I'm going to let Lazarus talk here, and well, you're talk well, I'm going to talk Lazarus what Lazarus <laughs> said. And early on, you probably want to take what he says at the beginning to heart, and uh, we'll talk about it before we continue. Okay, this is Lazarus again. P.S. I wrestled with myself for some time as to whether I should reveal this last bit of information to you. I do so only after prayerful confirmation that those of you that might pass the gauntlet to become earth guardians would prefer to know this now rather than later. This knowledge may convince you not to aspire to become an earth guardian. And it may also unnecessarily unnerve and disturb you as it is not good news about earth. If you are fearful of bad news, then you should leave now before I speak further. All right, so before I speak further, if, if, if there's anybody who's fearful of bad news, then you wanna tune out for now. Everybody, okay, then I'll continue then. One of the techniques you will learn as an earth guardian is to assess the odds of success in any venture or action of significance that you take. To make that assessment requires study and consideration of all the facts. Once that is done, you must use psychic or magical divination to see if what your data analysis revealed is confirmed. If you have confirmed from both methods, you must lastly pray directly to Elohim to support or not support your conclusions. Being able to get a very clear answer from Elohim after going through the first two steps is one of the keys of the priesthood. With that said, here's what I will reveal. I have confirmed this with all three steps, as have many higher Celestines, including my sister Miriam. Nevertheless, please do not take it as your own truth until you too have completed all three steps. This then is what I have to tell you. Based upon all of the current energies flowing through civilizations on earth, from politics to racial and cultural divides, from rich nation, poor nation chasms, to disease pandemics, to wars, and even meteors on trajectory to hit the earth, the likelihood of over 50% of the earth's population being wiped out of existence in a very short period of time is currently at 62% by the year 2050. So sometime between now and then. For that reason, those of you chosen to be Earth Guardians will be more important than any Earth Guardians have ever been, including me, who has watched over and protected the people of Earth for 2,000 years. 62% by 2050 is just the first measurement I will give you. During the next five years, the percentage of over 21% population loss is still a hefty 28%. Within the next 100 years, the percentage of over 50% population loss is 84%. Regardless of the source of termination, if you live in a city of over 100,000 people or any size city on the coast of an ocean in the Northern Hemisphere, you are very likely to be one of these statistics. If you live in a city of less than 100,000 people and not in a coastal city, you are very likely to not be one of these statistics. The other factor to consider is that these numbers only apply to cities and areas north of the equator. You can divide all of these numbers by five for cities in the southern hemisphere south of the equator. For instance, 62% termination by 2050 in the northern hemisphere would only be around 12% for cities south of the equator. 
as in the north, cities over 100,000 or on an ocean coast are at greater risk, but still much lower than northern cities. This is simply because the majority of the Earth's landmass and all of its major power countries and adversaries are in the Northern Hemisphere. Any catastrophe and its after effects are most likely to take place in countries of the Northern Hemisphere. For instance, if the current Russian-Ukraine war went nuclear, as Russia has been repeatedly stating is a possibility, they would be aiming their nuclear rockets at Ukraine and the countries supporting it, the US and Western Europe. They would not waste any bombs on countries in South America that are not involved, but they may drop one or two on Australia. The bad news is that similar scenarios have happened on many other worlds before this one, even to the complete extinction of all life on the planet, which is what happened to your planet Venus. The good news is these numbers are not set in stone. You have the power to change them for the better, far better. Certainly that is so if the Earth Guardians once again number 24 or more. Even before that, there is a tremendous ability to positively influence world events by the power of the Celestine Light Priesthood. For that to be possible, you must learn the magical and psychic ways of the priesthood. More than that, you must increase your numbers. So the light you create and send out into the world will be a force that cannot be overcome by darkness. I pray that each of you grow in the light quickly and brightly. I pray you will help find other children of light so you will have the numbers of power in the, your priesthood, Katas, Shinars, and Kurams. The greatest hope for this earth and the seven billion people upon it is all of you and your brothers and sisters of light yet to come. It is not the Taz or even the earth guardians. Both pale compared to the power of the priesthood of the Celestines together in person in Qurams and Qurams multiplied many times. May it be so, I pray, in the name of Yeshua, the Lord of light, so be it. Wow, I have goosebumps. Uh, wow. That's the first so time I've heard that. Yeah. So be it. So yeah. Be it. Yeah. yeah, wow. So that's a little... So we take that challenge... <laughs> yeah. We take that challenge and we do what we can to help this earth. Well, what Lazarus was saying there, the bottom so, line is that for us to have the greatest effect, it's is is even as we aspire to be earth guardians, the greatest effect is not being earth guardians, it's growing the celestial light so we have more priesthood members because that's mm -hmm. where the greatest power is. Growing. Because that's tapping into the direct powers. Yeah. Of Elohim. And then joining physically. Phys physically those. together. Exactly. Physically together. Would that be yep. in included, like, even if we didn't all say we all lived where we do now, but we got together on a regular basis, like, yeah, a if we have yeah, to, yeah, that would be fine. We, if, if, that, like it, we do, if we can do it in increments. It's like, yeah. ideally, we were told by Miriam many, many years ago to have a community in the Southern Hemisphere but we have to work with what we have right now. And we have this amazing property that would make a good first step. And then um, from there go somewhere else. I, I don't know, it, it, it West Texas. needs to unfold. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's, we work together and see what happens. Watch the magic. Yeah.